Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today is another what I eat in a day as a zero waste plant-based environmentalist. Also as someone who has to clean out her fridge because she's going out of town. So there's a few different components and I hope you guys want to follow along in this day of what I eat. Okay. The first thing I do in the morning is have a big glass of water. I have literally zero appetite when I wake up. So I need like 40 minutes, an hour-ish in order to start to feel hungry and I'll only eat when I feel hungry. So I have a big glass of water and I use a little bit of elderflower syrup or elderflower squash because I really like the way that tastes and then I also add my B12 to my morning glass of water. And then I'll have that while I get ready. Now I know for a fact that this is a giant jar. I love these jars specifically for drinking water in the morning. It's so big. But I also use these jars constantly for food storage. It is one of the preferred jars here in my house. And I finally got almost all of the label off. Not that it was difficult, just that I didn't want to do it. I have some there and it's gonna stay there. I don't know why I'm like this. I'll have to do some work. I need to do some filming today, answer some emails. I'm going out of town in two days and I'll be away from my office for a week so I have a lot of prep work to do in order to make that happen. So uh, today mostly it's about cleaning out my fridge using as many perishables as possible in my fridge. So we're gonna do that and um, that's what we're doing today. Now it's been ages since I made pancakes so I think we'll make pancakes. Also because I have this very sad little banana um, that I can easily put into a pancake recipe. So let's make pancakes. I have actually, I'll link it down below, a 10 minute vegan pancake recipe that I use every time I need to make pancakes that I'll sort of not use completely because that doesn't, uh, you don't add bananas to that recipe specifically. So we're gonna make them a little bit like, chunkier today because of the banana, but I'll still link it down below. It's my favorite recipe. Let's make it. There we are, okay. I'll mix everything in my food processor with the fruit. It's just gonna be easier. Start with nailing this. We're starting with the banana. Okay. Then I also had these raspberries in the freezer. So um, let's add those as well. Just a little bit of salt, like half a deciliter of sugar, preferably spilling it everywhere. That, that, that does make it better. Okay, in hindsight, that was way too much sugar. We'll just keep going. Just gonna add half a teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of cardamom. Nah, less. Just a smidge, a smidge. Then we're gonna do half a deciliter of oats. Maybe, yeah. Boop. We're gonna do approximately a deciliter of flour. Then, you know, we can adjust the recipe when we mix it all together to see how the consistency is. Then we can just adjust. That's normally not how you bake anything, but you know, we're winging it today. And I have never made bad pancakes this way, so I'm just gonna keep doing it. Now, I realized that I didn't have any oat milk and I could make oat milk, but I also had this opened coffee creamer from Oatly. Normally, I don't buy Oatly products, but this was in a grocery store a while ago, one of these, like, it's about to go bad, so we are selling it at an insane discount kind of energy. Um, so I got that, and then I used it a couple of days ago, and it smells fine. It's very thick. Um, it's, it's very thick. So we're gonna use about, like, half a deciliter, and then I'll add some water if the consistency is, isn't liquid enough, basically. Okay, so definitely need some water. Okay, blend it. This is where we're at. I do think it needs a tad bit more liquid and then we'll be good to go. I have some vegan butter on my pan and to scoop my batter, I've done this for ages. I don't know, I think I've shown it before, but I use an ice cream scooper because it's so much easier. Fantastic solution. Innovation at its finest. I think we had a good consistency here as well. Whoop, amazing, look at that. And now we wait. And we have pancakes. On screen, they look very dark. They don't look that dark in real life. I don't know. Um, but we have, we have pancakes. I think one of the reasons why they look so dark is because of the raspberry. So it does darken the entire batter. 
yeah, like this, it just looks black. <laughs> I don't know, um, but I am so excited to eat. But we're gonna we're gonna top them off with a few things. First of all, I have some nuts in my cupboard. I also have this date and chocolate Nutella. I'm just gonna add that as well, just to you know, like a little dollop. I don't know. I can't eat pancakes without without toppings, um, and I think this is this is good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Soft in the middle, crispy edges. Mm hmm. And I will eat as much of this as I can. When I feel like I can't eat any more of it, I'll just put it in the fridge and either have it later as a snack or Jens can have it when he comes back home. I'm not going to try to finish a dish if I don't feel like it. That's sort of my stance. I feel like food waste is incredibly important, but eating just to finish it without enjoying it, without liking it, without even feeling comfortable doing it, is also a waste. So either I'll freeze the rest, have Jens eat it, or snack on it later, and I'll eat until I'm full now. If you eat something you don't want to eat, it also goes to waste. This is tasty though. Very good. Raspberry, banana, oat pancakes. I'll finish my breakfast and I'll get to work and I will see you at lunch, which is gonna be in a while. Just, this is gonna keep me full for a long time. So I'm about to film a video. This is the little setup. I'm wearing sweats today. Um, I have to change into um, outside world clothes at some point, but for now we're just going sweats. It's been ages since I've been able to do that. So I'm just happy and comfortable, but I turn around in the office and I see a little, little tiny office dog. So she can keep me company while I record. Hey queen, I love you. It's lunchtime, it's about two o'clock. I usually eat lunch pretty late. Um, and later tonight, I think I'll also end up having a late dinner because I'm going out with a couple of friends. So it's time for lunch, okay. And um, surprise, surprise. It's pasta. So I have a tiny bit of pasta here. Yes, we do indeed have three different types of pasta in this jar. Um, and we're not gonna use all of it. I'll see if I can scoop out uh, the similar one so we don't end up having uneven cooking times. Then I have some frozen spinach that we'll use. I have a red onion, I have garlic. Then I have this chili pesto that I really, really like. A lot of pestos have cheese or uh, dairy, any sort of animal product in it. And this is one of the only, I think one of the only uh, red pestos that I have found without it. So I swear by this and it's nice and spicy as well. So that's great. And then I have a little bit of tomato puree. And then I'm thinking to sort of soften up the dish. We also, have the rest of the oatly cream. Let's chop something. Usually whenever I do anything with food, I have a bowl next to my cutting board like this, and then I'll simply save all the peels, onion peels, potato peels, carrot peels, etc. And uh, I'll save them in my freezer and use them to make veggie stock. That way those parts aren't wasted. You can use them for other things and it makes your dishes so much more flavorful. Now we have three cloves of garlic and one entire red onion on the pan with some olive oil and we're just gonna brown this. Simply just cooking garlic and onion on a pan is the standard, most essential. Oh, that smells good. What are you cooking? It's onions. It's always onions. <laughs> now we're gonna turn the heat down and uh, I'm gonna add the tomato puree and the pesto. Also, yes, still sweats, but we'll get there. We will also need the spinach. Actually, I will dump, dump the spinach in now. Spinach freezes amazingly well, by the way, so if you ever have too much and it's sort of becoming a little bit boring in the texture, just throw it in the freezer. I'm gonna do the tomato puree, like this, okay. And the pesto. 
By the way, the spoon is uh, my life. Okay, now let's add the cream. Whenever I use plant-based creams in hot dishes like this, it's very important that the temperature is not too high because that can have a negative effect on the overall texture of the cream and the sauce. So make sure that your pan is below medium when you add in the cream. Okay, uh, out of nine, mine is on four now. So Cream City, baby. I did not say that. You did not hear me say that. Now, one of my favorite things to add in any pasta sauce always is ground nutmeg. I talk about this every single time I get a chance to, but I love these things. I use fresh ground nutmeg in basically every pasta dish that I make, especially if you're looking to make like a cheesy pasta sauce. This is what makes bechamel taste like bechamel, really. At least you can't say bechamel without also saying ground nutmeg. Gonna do pepper as well. And salt. Mm. It could actually be spicy in one second. Now, a girl loves a spicy pasta dish and I use this chili and garlic oil always. Or it's like ground chili and garlic in oil. It is amazing. Oh yeah instantaneous difference. Let's go for some, let's go to Spice Town. Mm. It could use, whoo, yes. It could use a little bit of acidity, so I'll just, I have some bottled lime juice here, so we're just gonna give it a little bit of extra dimension. I think I've made too much sauce for one serving of pasta, so I'll take some of the sauce out and save it in the freezer. My mom's whole church free for you. Thank you. It, it looks really good. Really the pasta is done. I'll be transferring the pasta onto the pan with the sauce and then add a little bit of the pasta water. and we have touched down. Oh yes! I love this bowl, by the way. It is a thrift find and I love it. Um, and I also love the pasta that is contained in the bowl. So let's, let's taste it. Mm, the perfect amount of spicy. I could have pasta every day. That wouldn't be a problem. Eating my pasta. Jens is home from work and uh, you have pancakes. Yes. You did not expect to have pancakes. I'm very excited about the pancakes. Get a bit of everything. Mmm. Mmm. I just predicted that perhaps I could uh, I could just give them to you and you would uh, you would make them disappear. You predicted correctly. Oh, is it warm? Oh, it's a happy food dance. Oh, it's a tiny one. Oh, it's... I'm headed out the door in two seconds. I just really wanted to document that I, in fact, can also wear other things. So, this is the outfit. It is yet again the classic vintage two-piece. And uh, I wear this all the time. And I feel like I wasn't, I wasn't gonna wear it today, but I have menstrual cramps. So I don't wanna wear anything that's too hugging and tight. This is loose and nice, so that's that's where we are. Okay. Yes. Eternal vibes. Let's go. So for dinner, I had vegan burritos at my friend's Vanya's place before we went out for a beer, and we had a great night, but the footage from this night is not amazing. So here is some extra footage of other burritos I've made at different points in time. And on that note, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I've left some recipes down below so you can check those out as well. And let me know in the comments if you still like these what I eat in a day videos or if there are any specific recipes or things you want me to try out in one of these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I will see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.